My name is Daniel Sanchez, and this broadcast is being recorded in order to shed light on a recent discovery of media that came into my possession. To put my thoughts simply, I've been a firm believer that people like you, me, and everyone out there deserves to know the truth. And the disclosure that's currently being put out there by the governmental sectors is none other than falsified, dishonest, and completely deceptive. And I happen to know that because earlier today, a friend and colleague of mine by the name of Dylan Brown reached out and confided in my help regarding his numerous attempts at posting video footage from his latest documentary and having that footage be immediately seized by governmental resources. Yet, despite this censorship, I happen to possess a particular skill set and knowledge in both computing and programming that can work around these obstacles. Yet, perhaps that's why he entrusted me with this footage. So, allow me to pull up the letter that he wrote stating, Dear Daniel, I'm writing to inform you about our upcoming documentary release on unexplained aerial phenomena and extraterrestrial beings, in which I personally believe have possession and videographic proof of. Upon the film's intended initial release, flags have been raised across all of my streamer distributor outlets, as well as the subsequent blockage and seizure from every major platform. Due to this rising and ongoing tension, I've compiled and collectivized my story via video log entries that are embedded in this document to provide context towards the witness testimonial coverage. I think it is critical to state that I've begun to fear for the safety of myself and those involved with this film. Please see to it that it gets out in its entirety via whichever pathways you see fit. I can only trust you now and my source that initially connected us. Thus, until further notice, I think it is best if I relinquish any involvement in digital communications and signal solely via satellite radio. Bear in mind, I'm risking my life in getting this information out to you, so please do not disregard it or configure it as any sort of conspiracy theory or hoax. For my involvement already could result in my possible imminent capture, imprisonment, abduction, and or execution, which in theory can provide some sort of proof evidence and or authenticity towards my obtained documents, or at the very least provide motive towards my suspected whereabouts. I am certain that there are other accounts out there like this, and it is of grave importance that we share this out to the necessary outlets and to the public before it is too late. Sincerely, Dylan Brown. So just to be clear, what you're about to see is sensitive. And I ask that you retain that all for what it is. Because after personally seeing what was on these tapes, I have no doubt that I'm doing the right thing by sharing this. So I just hope that you'll share it too. of legislation very simple it just said uh, uh, that when the um when a commercial airline pilot reports a sighting or something unusual an anomaly in the air that when he reports that to faa they reported to congress and i was told by leadership that it was blocked by the intelligence community not the intelligence committee but the intelligence community and that is a very chilling effect if you if you reach someone can reach through the veil of government and pierce it to the point of we do not have access to something you got to start asking yourself who the hell's in control. If you believe we have crashed craft, uh, stated earlier, do we have the bodies of the pilots who piloted this craft? As I've stated publicly already in my News Nation interview, uh, biologics came with some of these recoveries. Yeah. 
Um, were they, I guess, human or non-human biologics? Non-human, and that was the assessment of people uh, with direct knowledge on the program I talked to that are currently still on the program. There's, a, there's like an eight-foot person beside it, and another one's inside, and it has big eyes and looking at us, and it's still there. Hey, this might sound like a really dumb question, but did you guys see anything fall out of the sky? My name is Dylan Brown. I'm a filmmaker in Reno, Nevada. On the night of July 25th, I experienced something unbelievable. I experienced sheer terror for the first time in my life. There are only a few people who know what happened, and I think I am finally ready to release this footage, knowing full well what it might do um, but thankfully, I've got enough people on my side to hopefully keep me protected. Um, I have to tell this story. I think they think they're being sneaky, but there's no way this is just leaving unattended vehicles for days on end. Somebody's somebody is definitely watching this place. I don't think there's anything I can honestly say that would even come close to uh, describing uh, the footage that I'm going to share with you. Um, it's been a struggle, I guess, to, to sit on this for as long as I have. Um, I've wanted to release it, but after what happened, I just thought... I'm probably in imminent danger. My family is probably in danger. Um, but I also feel like too much goes on unchecked in this country. Um, I feel like there are too many uh, unexplained occurrences and, uh, and, and people have experiences um, that they want to share, but they're being scared uh, by somebody, whether it's the government or some other underground agency, I really don't know. Somebody is is making sure people do not talk. Um, it's been about three weeks since uh, since all this happened, and um, I I haven't been to work. I've basically just been calling in sick. Thankfully, I have a job that allows me to um, to do that. Right to keep collecting a paycheck. Um, so I'm, I'm saying this to you, to anybody watching this, uh, if for some reason I go dark, if for some reason I go silent, if for some reason, uh, it seems like, you know, nobody's heard from me. Um, this is why I'm releasing this footage to protect all of you because I don't want what happened to me to happen to you because they are here. They're watching. And this is all very, very real. So I've been watched multiple times. I started documenting it 
Every couple days I was checking. Trucks parked out front, parked across the street. Somebody's been watching because I think they know that I'm gonna release this footage. Did you notice the, the vans are back? Yeah, that's weird. Those trucks are still there. I know they're watching me. They've been watching my house for weeks. Um, it's like every time I go outside, they'll be there. I haven't seen any people in the vehicles, but I guarantee that they're looming. You know, I think they're inside the backs. It's like every time we put the footage out there, within a couple minutes it'd be taken down or you'd go to access it and it would say, sorry, you know, video not found. So I would upload it again and then the same thing would happen. Um, I even tried disguising it by kind of packaging some other footage around it uh, and then dropping the footage in between two completely unrelated clips hoping that maybe whoever was scouring this stuff wouldn't find it but they found that too so um i just i'm just continuing to push it out there we're gonna see what happens um i'm about ready to come by my house right now we're gonna see if those if those vehicles are still sitting there because i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure that they've been watching the house Pretty much every day we have got to tell the world that they are real hey it's Dustin Tamplin today's July 27th it's 6.04 p.m. Just outside of North Las Vegas, Nevada. I want my location and the time documented. Because when they find out, I want everyone to know exactly where I was. Um, so, okay, my family and I come down here for our vacation this year to visit Priscilla's aunt because she lives in the area. We haven't been down here in a while to see her. A couple days after we got here, the uh, the sightings and things happen. Um, all the weird events taking place, right? So uh, Dylan Brown hits me up and asks me, he says, "Hey man, anything weird going on over by where you guys are at? Anything out of the ordinary?" At the time, I said, "No, nothing weird here, man. Nothing out of the ordinary. We're just having a family vacation, just visiting. You know, nothing exciting." Well, all right, I had to get out of the house for a little bit. Priscilla and I were fighting about some dumb shit, and I just, I needed a breather. Um, this whole vacation is a bit much. Anyway, I drove down here to this open, it's going to be new houses. It's just a bunch of open lots. There's nothing here but dirt. Uh, there's no lights or anything, but I keep seeing these flashes. Um, and I don't know where the hell they're coming from. It's kind of creeping me out a little bit. Um, I, I really want to get out of here, but I also wanted to get the old camera out and see if I can capture any of it because it's super weird. It's just so random. There's no, there's no rhyme or reason to it. Um, so I'm just going to sit here and wait and uh, see if I can catch it again because it's, it's trippy. I don't understand where it's coming from. There's, there's got to be somebody out here f***ing around. Dude! the f***?
So, just for reference, just a just a subdivision expansion here. They're getting ready to pop in new houses, right? Just like any other subdivision, no big deal. I'm staying away from this. I'm not getting too close. But right there on the side of the hill where the color changes, it gets a little darker. That's where they marked it or it's burned or something. I don't know, but that's that's exactly what that is. So they can come back. So they know know where to find this area. I don't know what for, but there's nothing out here. You can see there's nothing out here. And look at this. They're watching. They're following me right now. Tell me that's a construction vehicle. Bullshit, that's a construction vehicle. They haven't been doing construction out here in weeks. But that's not the weird part. This hill, that vehicle, that's not the weird part. Look at this shit. I'm sitting in the truck blowing off steam. And these lights, right, just start flashing all over the place. And these loud-ass noises, this huge thunderous boom blows a hole in the ground right here by the truck i was parked right there just like i am now blows this giant hole in the ground rocks and shit are just pelting the truck it's probably full of dents and scratches i don't know i haven't looked i don't give because i'm getting out of here immediately let me lock this shit okay so dylan i know you're, you want this to compile all your footage and everything, and I, I really hope it helps you, brother, because I'm not sending you anymore. We are getting the f out of here. One of the strangest videos that we got was actually from a famous influencer, uh, kind of a local celebrity. Um, he's done a lot of videos, uh, public appearances. He got pretty famous on social media. Um, put out this very bizarre video, right? Uh, talking about conspiracies and all these things. Uh, the problem was, it was really hard to tell if he was being serious uh, or if this was just another kind of ploy for likes, right? Uh, now the guy had kind of a problem with addiction um, and so a lot of people were speculating that maybe he had fallen off the wagon and that's why this video was so bizarre. Uh, the, the video itself, is is weird it's goofy um personally i i think it was probably something that they were doing to generate some likes or he maybe did fall off the wagon it, it's such a strange video that it's hard to it's hard for me to buy that he actually believed this stuff but the strangest part about it is after the video was out for a while and a lot of people had seen it it suddenly was mysteriously pulled and uh he was pronounced dead in a car accident. Nobody saw the body. Uh, famous influencer dies in a drunk driving accident. No body. No funeral. No memorial service. Gone. Nick? Dude. Nick? Nick, what are you doing? Dude, what's going on? What's with your hair, dude? What's up, man? Who are you? No more? Yeah, you asked me to come over. When? Since when do you have a bunker? What is this thing? I'm building it, man. I told you, man. Is that thing recording? Y are yeah. they listening? You asked me to come in with me? a camera. Like, what is going on? If you can hear me. They're out there. Who's out there? Them. Them what? The police? Like, what's going on? Like, should I be concerned? Should I leave your house? Or, or, what, what? They're coming, man. I saw them. There's the lights. Can you speak English? Who the f is them? Have you seen my dog? Your, your do Luca? Where's Luca? Where'd they go? Where'd these come from? What happened? Uh, uh I, I, I didn't see her, but should I, I get you? Right. To, I was right all along. Should I get you to the I knew it. I fucking knew it, man. They're out there, man. I saw them. They're, they're with the men in black. <laughs> the men in black. The, the, the Illuminati, man. They were in it all along. They knew about it. The, the Illuminati. All the, all the elite, man. They're in on it, the Bilderberg group. They knew the whole time they're keeping a secret. Thomas Edison. 
That's what happened to Nikolai Tesla, man. They took him away, man. Okay. You're gonna do that to us. Uh, all right, all right. I'm gonna stop you there. Let's go to a hospital. Those don't look good. Um. There you go. Man. It's perfect. It's gonna fit perfect. Uh, okay, um, now what? Dude, do you feel better now? Yeah, I can hear my thoughts. Um, so aliens, right? Aliens. Um, do you, are they like the ones in the movies where they like shapeshift and all that? Are you one of them? Um. Are you one of them? Uh, no. Are you one of them? What the f and then I received the footage from the rave. Hey guys, it's Alex. Welcome back to my channel. I am here with my two best friends in the entire world, Sydney and Georgie. And we are about to be at the funnest party oh for the entire God. year. Yes. How it's excited so are you guys? Dude, I just so want to get excited. trashed. Oh my God. Yeah. What if like Damon's going to be here? Oh, I hope he oh. brought Zach. I heat better. I mean, it's only been a week since we've been trying to convince them. I know. I mean, if they're not here, I feel like it wouldn't be much of a party, but they'll probably be here. Yeah. Like, it's gonna be a blast. I hope they brought so lots of beer. Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> probably gonna be drinks galore. Oh my god, I hope so. After you, milady. There's a lot of cars here. Who's here? Do you guys even know like who all is gonna be here tonight? Get in here. <laughs> it's a video loser. Oh my god. Oh god. Uh, okay, let's just go inside already. I am so excited. Okay. Creepy door. Creepy uh, door. I got the question here. Well, let's see if it works. It's so dark in there. I thought I brought one. You guys look so cute. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Know. <laughs> you know, I was really hoping that this party is that big. I hope so. Wow. You hope so? Oh, so, look, everybody's here.
idea. Where is that? There's Where is the oh, car? Oh. Wait, there's oh, more no, of them? Oh, no, there's one, there's one outside. Oh, okay. Oh, God. We're turning okay. back around, guys. We gotta go back in. There's more of them. The back head back. What did you see? Oh, my God. I don't even know. I don't even know. Alex, what do you mean you don't know? What did you see? Guys, we gotta get out of here. I don't even know where to go. Where are we gonna go? The best way is to out that window. So I've been laying low, um, got a decent uh, kind of hideaway here that my buddies let me set up in. Um, and I'm going to show you now uh, what happened to me on the night of July 25th. Um, there's really no way to preface this. I think it's easiest if I just... Uh, I, I, I guess I should just show you guys. All right, so I'm documenting this because I've got meth heads or hobos or somebody keeps getting into my backyard. The cops will do nothing. And I guess maybe I have to resort to filming them to finally get some help around here. So uh, I'm pretty sure they're digging through my garbage, probably looking for cans. Uh, I'm tired of this shit, honestly. Just as I suspected. You guys better get the hell off my property. Look, I'm calling the cops. I'm calling the freaking cops.
I gotta stop watching my own movies. If I find any of you bums out here, I'm gonna shoot you, I swear to God.
So I'm sure you can see why I didn't want to turn that over to the authorities. Uh, and I'm sure you can see why it would be really hard to explain um, to the cops about what happened. Uh, <laughs> so it's pretty clear that whoever's after me does not want the footage out there, right? Um, and I'm going to put the footage out there. The problem is it's a little easier to take those kind of chances when your buddy who's a former Green Beret is here uh, and can probably help out in case something goes down. Mike uh, has actually been called away on a special assignment um, somewhere in the Smoky Mountains. I don't exactly know what's going on, uh, but he's been gone for a little while, and I don't know when he'll be back. Um, it's not like uh, I'm not used to this kind of shit. Clearly, um, we've already had our run-ins with things that seemingly feel unbelievable, especially with the whole Bigfoot thing up at Lake Tahoe. Um, I just, I just wish he was here because it'd be a little easier for me to kind of handle what went down, right? So, um, what I'm doing, uh, I left the house. I'm actually uh, in a hideout, staying at a buddy's garage. Uh, just kind of hanging out here, laying low for the time being. Uh, the problem is, I think that, you know, at some point, at some point I'm gonna go home. Uh, I am not going to let them keep me and my family out. Uh, my family's gone. They are in an undisclosed location with my parents, which is great. Uh, it allows me to sort of operate, get this shit out there, uh, knowing that I'm the only one in danger at this point, right? Um, I know that they're very worried about me, but uh, I mean, I showed my wife that video footage and it was a pretty quick decision for her to say, I'm out. I'm taking the kids and I'm out. Um, they wanted me to come with them, but I told them, you know, just like with, with Tahoe Joe, uh, I have to get, I have to get this video footage out to somebody. Somebody has to see this. I know there are other people who are having the exact same thing because they're sending me their footage. I don't know what's happened to any of them. Um, but it's best if I just lay low. I'm documenting all of this because at some point this is going to come out. Um, and I just really hope Mike... I really hope Mike gets home soon uh, because I'm, I'm going to need his help on this one. So we, um, looking back through that footage, I mean, a bunch of the security footage we've got has shown various things, right? Now, when you look at the footage, I, I initially thought there were multiple grays, right? It seemed like they were all over the place. I upstairs in the house and then you know right outside uh one minute in the backyard one minute out front then we found this photo this was from a uh, security cam that i've got inside the garage um main reason it was in there was we've got a baby likes to go out in the garage and play with things started setting up a, a cam out there just so we could make sure he wasn't hanging out behind the cars or whatever when we go to leave um the uh the security cam footage from the garage captured this image of myself in the van when I uh, retreated in there once the whatever it was came through the doggy door and then it lunged at the van and we caught this image of it um, as you can see there's transparency here it's like it's kind of here and kind of not it almost looks like a ghost right this has me thinking that maybe there weren't multiple organisms multiple uh, creatures beings whatever that it was the same one uh, potentially projecting itself all over so almost like a hologram uh, to look like more maybe some kind of a defense mechanism maybe that's how they disorient or confuse their prey or their their quarry their uh, enemies whatever by projecting itself uh, all over the place because it, 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 it looks hollow here it doesn't look like it's actually organically there with me the other thing I was considering is if these are interdimensional beings uh, was it was it trying to manifest itself from its world to our world and it was losing its connection or control at this point? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they don't travel here from ships. Maybe they come through portals. Uh, you would think something that has to come here from a ship would be an excellent engineer uh, to be able to travel that far. 
and uh, and for this thing to just show up uh, with really no form of suit and just just kind of all of a sudden be there it makes me think that maybe they they're using wormholes or something instead and they can teleport or or I don't know I'm I'm sounding absolutely insane right now but <clears throat> All I know is what I experienced was extremely real. I am scared. I'm scared. I'm scared of who wants this footage and what they're going to do to me uh, if I release it. I tried reaching out to Mike to sort of let him know what's been going on. Um, they must be completely off the grid with whatever they're doing because uh, it goes straight to voicemail, and that's not him. I mean, if I call Mike's on it, especially after the Tahoe thing, right? Uh, he's been he's been on it immediately. Um, so I can't get a hold of him. I'm just gonna keep pushing on with this on my own. I did uh, have a buddy of mine do a deep dive for me. Uh, Josh Brucker, one of the horror dads. He uh, he got into kind of the back catalog of his alien stuff he's a big time alien guy um and he dug up a video for me um from a pretty respected i think astrophysicist uh the guy is brilliant but again nobody's heard from him in a long time hi i'm dr phineas strathmont a professor of metaphysics for over 30 years if you look for me on the internet, you won't find a thing. That's because I've been part of a secret research team. I risk my job and my very life sharing what I'm about to. If enough people are aware of the threat, maybe, just maybe, something can be done to save humankind. It might be too late. Upon embarking on a career path involving the research of covert science, which would be considered science fiction to most, I also began a lifelong side study of the alien UFO phenomena. It is with this pursuit of the unknown combined with my advanced studies of metaphysics that I bring to you the following educated hypothesis and warning. What we're dealing with here is hard to even contemplate. The idea that these are spaceships is the machinations of a simple mind. No offense. By that logic, if something isn't traveling here in ships, I believe that these beings have mastered a way to instantaneously get here interdimensionally. If so, this could be the threat. These interdimensional beings are likely not here for nefarious purposes, right? Why would they travel so far to be violent and risk stranding themselves? So, I am um, packing up my stuff. I'm tired of this. I'm going to go back home. Um, it's time to stop sort of living in fear. I haven't seen any of the mysterious vans for a long time. So uh, I'm going to go home. I'm, I'm ready to move on with my life. And, uh, and, and I'm going to tell this story no matter what. Yeah. Hi there, my name is Lauren. We're with the Rodriguez Gutter Company. Okay. We've had some severe storms recently and we've been around the neighborhood and we've noticed that your gutters are pretty clogged. Uh, I honestly, I wouldn't even know. I've been gone for a couple weeks. I haven't even had a chance to check. You know, it's interesting that you said you've been gone a couple weeks, so have your neighbors. We checked theirs and we quoted them. We'd love to give you a good quote and clean them out for you. Um, I, I'm interested, but 
honestly, I am so tired. Um, can you guys next week would that work? Could you come back? Could you, you got a card? I have a card. Next week's pretty long though. Um, yeah, I know. It's just it's really it's not a good time for me, honestly. We know the footage you have. You might want to keep that shit off the internet. Drop the gun! It's about time you showed up. I've been trying to get a hold of you for weeks now. I know, I know, I've been busy. I've been watching you the whole time though. You've been watching me the whole time and you just showed up now? <laughs> yeah, man. All this stuff that's been going on, I've been keeping my eyes on you. So, I had to make sure these are bad guys. Oh, I can pretty much vouch that they're bad guys. <laughs> All right. I'll tell you what, we'll make a call real quick. Oh, God. Hey. 18 Charlie 1. Got two couches that need to go to the landfill. Alright, set up my location now. Out. Alright. We need to disappear for about an hour or so. While we're doing that, you're going to take all this footage. We need to get that out there. You need to upload it. Alright? Yeah, done. Come on. It's going. What the hell is a landfill? Yo, Mike, we gotta talk about your past. I believe, in essence, that they could move into an area quickly to hunt, then disappear fast, leaving minimal witnesses. This is occurring. Let this be your warning. Be safe, everybody. Okay, so this next video I've chosen to release publicly caught both my attention and my concern for a number of reasons. Primarily due to the fact of its disturbing nature. Um, initially, this documentation was acquired from a private source via the dark web. 
This and sadly many others like it are advertised and sold for personal gains and most oftentimes exclusive to the highest bidder. And in hopes to put a stop to websites like this, we need to spread awareness about darknet marketplaces. And that is why I'm publicly releasing this to the surface web. I am choosing a high profile case out of Illinois and I'm hoping that this will get seen by the right people. But if you are choosing to move forward and watching this, I have to disclaim that these are real atrocities being made onto real people, real victims. So please only proceed if you can emotionally handle the unfortunate nature of these outcomes. up there and a little bit farther I believe it's the full circle one but we have a little spot like this uh, in spring spot like this Out the lines. Okay, can you hear me? All good. Okay, great. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know what that was. Ready? Alright guys, thank you for joining us for another episode of Small Town Sleuths. Over the next few episodes, we'll be covering something a little more fringe. For over 10 years, over 10 disappearances have occurred in this small rural area of Illinois. No leads, no clues, nothing to tell law enforcement officials which directions to go in. Many have speculated what is responsible for these disappearances. Aliens, a government cover-up, an ancient curse. I believe this area is home to an active serial killer. And no and I intend on uncovering the truth and bring this person or persons to light. Okay, is that good? That was awesome. I probably can lose more stuff, huh? You want to just go around back, maybe? Yeah, probably should.
Uh, my name is Todd Larson. Um, Megan Larson is my sister, uh, my little sister, and I've been staying with her for a couple of months. Um, got some some marital problems going on, and she took me in, so I've been staying uh, downstairs. Um, so I sleep downstairs, and Megan sleeps upstairs. Um, the night or early morning uh, that. Whenever all this happened, I, I, I didn't hear anything. Nothing woke me up. There, Nothing seemed out of the ordinary. I got a little alarmed uh, when I was getting ready for work, and Megan still wasn't up. She's usually always up making coffee. Um, so the fact that she wasn't up and hadn't notified me that she wasn't going into work that day was, was alarming. So I went upstairs to check on her, and after a couple of attempts, she never did answer the the door her bedroom door so I uh, I forced my way into the room and Megan wasn't there and I started to get concerned because her cell phone her purse uh, and her car were all still here so I immediately notified the police and they came out they said they didn't find anything suspicious outside there were no tracks or anything leading up to windows uh, either coming to the house or leaving from the house um, there was no signs of forced entry um, they really found nothing and so I've I've done a little of my own searching talking to people and nobody seems to know anything um, we just we just want answers all we want are answers um, we just want Megan to come home, whether whether she's with us or or the worst has happened. We just want to know. Hey, hey, are you the, oh, you're those people? Yeah. Coming in? Okay, okay. Can you have a seat for me? Can you have a seat for me, please? So I was just going to walk out here and show you where, uh, where she used to like to be here, my Colleen. Okay. And, uh, ever since she's been gone, I just... And her daddy, he took off, couldn't deal with it, and so I took I on. To do I took on this little one to kind of fill the void that I felt, and haven't had much help around here on the uh, lawn. The grass, the I'm very lawn busy grass with her. Scary. So, Can you tell us a little about Colleen. The lawn grass is scary. <laughs> so, Colleen, she was, she was a brilliant bright child she I think she had a great future ahead of her she was so smart and kind and beautiful and funny and I really always knew that she would go places she would get out of this small town and be somebody as long as she applied herself and we are going to go to heaven that's right that's right can you tell us a little about the night she went missing well it was so long ago um I was working and she called me. We got into a fight because she needed a ride right then from her job to get home. And I couldn't leave my job to go get her and take her home. So last thing she said to me was, well, I'll just get my own ride and it's late. And she just hung up on me. Just no, I love you, no goodbyes. I don't think about it all the time about what I could have done different and if I would have just given her a ride, what would have happened? Obviously law enforcement was brought in. Can you give us one down as far as that went? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, it was a long, 
overrun deal, but basically it boiled down to nothing. They were useless. I mean, as soon as the search began, it was done. There was no clues, no witnesses. Nobody knew anything about who'd given her a ride, or who she left with, where she went. She just was gone. How much interest is there in the case today? <laughs> really only me. <laughs> You're the first person that's talked to me about her and well, since she's been missing the last four years or so. I'm sorry, Nancy. Let's keep Hopefully walking. Hopefully you find some closure soon. Let's keep walking. That's all I've ever wanted. Just Let's keep walking. Okay, we'll walk in a minute. All right. That's why I took this one on. She's She needs me, and I need her. If I go to Tredastin. That's right, you do. This week's episode of Small Town Sleuths. Please like and subscribe for future episodes as we dig deeper into the Olney Valley disappearances. And as always, stay safe out there. Yes, sir. Let's hope they like it. Rachel, what? What? You're not gonna fucking believe this. You think they're real? I do. How, how do they even know the emails? I don't know. I got off work, came home, checked my email, and it was just there. What, <clears throat> what do you want to do? I think we should put it on the channel. Wait, 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 wait. Why not? Rachel, it's obvious. What's obvious? If those are real, and I, I'm unconvinced, but if they are, that could get our channel canceled. We've been on a decline though, Noah. Yeah, but we worked hard for that shit, Rachel. This could drive the traffic the channel needs. But I, I still we're, think- We're doing it. No, we're doing it. Okay, I'm behind you. I don't agree, but we're in it, so be my guest. Thank you. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll get them transferred over to a, a, a different file, and I'll, uh, I'll let you know when I'm finished. Okay, so things have gotten interesting. I was personally emailed a few videos not long ago. After Noah and I had a conversation, we mutually agreed to release the footage of these videos on our channel. We aren't even sure if they're real yet, but if they are, we have no clue where this road will take us. I think whoever emailed these videos wanted me to release them. Maybe because I was gonna pull the plug, maybe they fuck with us some more, I don't know. But these videos, they're graphic, so watch at your own risk. I decided to call them the Illinois Murder Valley Tapes. I just said that wrong, didn't I? The Illinois Valley Murder Tapes and you'll see why.
Okay, um, do you want to do a quick intro real quick? Yeah, yeah, we should. So we're at the mystery address that our mystery contact gave us. So do a look around and meet up and hopefully get some answers. I like it. So uh, did they did they say what we're looking for out here? Or? They didn't say anything. Well, that's that's nice. Oh, and that's not a creepy sign at all. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't like this. Hmm. Not good aim. <laughs> yeah, good good grouping, right? It's. It's really nice to be told to just come out here by some random stranger and uh, find that. There's a lot of uh, hiding spots out here. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about this, Noah. Um, oh, came back. I'm, I'm definitely getting creepy vibes out here. Far. Did they say what we're looking for out here? Is there an elevator? Oh, it's right there. Okay. I was trying to act like we were talking about the person who emailed us. <laughs> okay. could be anywhere out there. There's just too much that can go wrong. I definitely agree. You're, you're the one who said we, we're going to do this, so... We're going to get justice. I, I know it. Are you sure they said meet out here? I am pretty sure. Now I just, I don't know. This just seems like a setup. <laughs> I could have sworn I saw leaves moving. What's that? What the hell? Mm. Is that around it? Uh. I mean, I'm not trying to get ate up. Kind of in. Um, we still haven't seen anybody. I, I, I don't know. What, what? what the fuck was that? Um, I think you need to leave Noah. Yeah, let's, um, let's get out of here. That, um, I don't know what that was. I don't like that. Could be anywhere. Wait, wait a second. Um, Did you hear something? Uh, yeah. Um, uh, should we? You said we needed answers, right? And I just, I feel like
Who the fuck is that? Fuck. Fuck! What, what, what? Oh, fuck. It's really you. I, I I brought it here for you. She's 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 yours. What the fuck, Noah? You you really it's, it's, she's yours, man. She's I I brought it here for you. I I love your work. I just, I've been obsessed. Oh. You really, you really fell for this. <laughs> I can't believe you. Please, Noah. Who do you think, who do you think sent you the videos? Who do you think, who do you really think some stranger just gave you the info to this place? <laughs> Why? I have the opportunity now to, I hope he loves this as much as I will. I have to be as good at this art. No, don't! Don't! No! No! <laughs> no! It is for you. I love your artwork. It's so good. Why? I did this for you. We can work together. Why? Thank <laughs> you. 
Do uh, three quick inhales to the nose, like, okay. get that last. Thank wolf. you for joining us for another episode of Small Town Sleuths. Please like and subscribe for future episodes. What are we doing, Noah? What are we going to tell them? Are we going to tell them what? That we've been together for six months now. They might actually really like it. <sighs> I don't think that we need. I don't think we need to take away from this, though. I mean, we've been we've been working really hard. We've been working really hard. I just. Do, do you really think they need snow right now, though? I don't want to know. They should know we're together. Just, we'll let them know, but we just. We got. I I feel like we should wait. You know, I just don't. Don't worry. We'll tell them. Okay, we'll just it'll be a little cherry on top whenever we're finished with this. But we're still recording. No idea. Right Wanna just wanna get some things off my chest, you know. In case things don't quite go as planned. Um as you know, Rachel and I are investigating some disappearances could say I just I happen to know they're not to at least witness art of that magnitude I intend to play with Rachel as a beloved murderer seems to almost play with his artwork with his muses gonna lure him our artist and Rachel to the same spot and give her to I intend to work with him to dig deeper not for a story, not for small town sleuths with Rachel, but for fun. I've been contemplating for the last hour now whether or not I should even make another video. 
But in the time it must have taken me to upload both of these other videos, a mysterious icon pops up on my screen, obviously wanting me to click it, which I can only assume is another video. And then I guess part of me is also saying that I don't know if I can stomach another video like this. Maybe this was a bad idea.